Having a streamlined procurement process and a clear procurement strategy is essential to ensure your organization is able to meet its business goals, ranging from profitability to sustainability and more. This is Smart Consulting Sourcing, the only podcast about consulting procurement or how to buy consulting services. You'll get tips on how to use consulting, buy consulting, and managing the consulting. Tips and tricks from the pros. Let's do this. This is Smart Consulting Sourcing. And now your host, Ellen Lafitte. Hello and welcome back to Smart Consulting Sourcing, the only podcast about consulting procurement. I am Hélène and today we'll be talking about direct versus indirect procurement. However, before that, let me recap what we said last week about the different types of consultancies. There are n numbers of roles that consultants play to enable smooth day-to-day running of the business. And every project is different. Consultants are hired when the client lacks the specific expertise required to solve a complex business problem. In order to know what their capabilities are and what value they can add to your consulting project, you need to look into various dimensions of the firm, like the size and geographic footprint, the ownership structure partner's profile, and the delivery model. With that information, you'll have a better understanding of the types of consultants based on their skill sets and the areas of of specialization. As a result, you will know what they might accomplish for you, or at the very least, what initiative they could add value to. And that's a prerequisite to buy consulting services better. However, this week, I want to talk about direct versus indirect procurement, because it's important to better understand the consulting category. A consistent, well-planned supply of goods and services is vital to success, regardless of the company's size. Procurement is a complicated job because you need, at the same time, to design the right strategy to deliver the best purchasing value, while also supplying materials and services on time and quality to keep the company running. Procurement, both indirect and direct, might be considered secondary activity, but both play an essential role in a company's growth. Understanding the similarities and distinction between the two can help you better handle your indirect spend and in particular, consulting. So let's get started, shall we? What is direct and indirect procurement? Whether you are in the manufacturing business or not, and whatever business you're in, you need to understand there are inputs that go into processing and come out as outputs that you're selling. It's essential to control the raw material, parts and components, and sub-assemblies. Without these materials, the production will be disturbed. So you need to be excellent at procuring all the items used in inputs. The acquisition of raw materials utilized in the company's operation is known as direct procurement. For example, wood, nails, concrete, and other building materials are used as raw materials for home construction. Similarly, raw food items available in retail stores are used as raw materials for a restaurant business. Direct procurement is used by firms that offer tangible things to customers or other enterprises to generate money. Businesses like software services, where the ultimate output is intangible and no raw material are utilized in production, are an exception. So let's see what are the differences between direct and indirect procurement. First, direct procurement is more recognized internally. Now, when I say direct procurement is more well-known than in direct procurement in many firms, it's because direct procurement helps with production. As a result, it receives more attention, resources, and access to internal stakeholders. Direct procurement is frequently better supported and has, has more senior management backing. This isn't to say that indirect procurement isn't vital. It just means that getting the awareness and resources it requires can be more difficult. Young professionals want to utilize their talents and expertise to make a difference globally. And many believe that working in direct procurement would allow them to do so most successfully. On the surface, direct procurement seems to provide young workers with more significant possibilities to learn and grow. Much of the work in an indirect procurement function looks routine and repetitive. Finally, direct procurement positions often pay and benefit more than the indirect procurement positions. So it's no surprise that young procurement professionals are leaning are leaning into direct jobs for all of these reasons. However, indirect procurement has a lot to offer too. Indirect is more diverse. Indirect spending is complex, often made up of a mix of both tangible and intangible services. Tangible goods like office supplies and tangible benefits like 
maintenance or cleaning can be easily recognized as part of indirect spending. However, less recognition is given to the intangible services that are also classified as indirect. These intangibles, such as legal, executive search, or consulting services, can often be more complex and challenging to track. As a result, many organizations struggle to get a complete picture of their indirect spend. However, understanding all aspects of indirect procurement is essential for developing effective strategy for reducing costs. From a category management standpoint, indirect is a heterogeneous group of categories. The criteria for defining a category are a discrete marketplace, homogeneous customer preference, homogeneous regulation. And the marketplace has to be small enough to work on, but large enough to find opportunities. However, many of the categories within indirect do not fit this criteria neatly. This can present challenges when trying to manage these categories effectively. For example, Some customer groups may have disparate preferences for products in the same category. And strategic sourcing that requires knowing the supply market inside out is also time consuming and complex, making it challenging to create homogeneous customer segments. If you look at the different categories in indirect procurement, you realize that it's not generally organized. Regulation varies significantly from one jurisdiction to another, making it difficult to create homogeneous regulatory environments. Indirect procurement is constantly evolving. Indirect is an ever-changing job, with new categories emerging all the time. Cloud computing and e-payments are two of the most recent additions to the indirect category, complex and often misunderstood. They are already having a significant impact of businesses. As cloud computing becomes more prevalent, businesses are finding that they can save money by using cloud-based services instead of traditional IT infrastructure. E-payments also becoming more popular as they offer a convenient and secure way to make payments online. And all these new categories require different skills and address different supply market. Exciting, right? And this is only the tip of the iceberg. Clearly, indirect procurement will continue to evolve over the years to come. So in many firms, direct procurement is more well-known than indirect procurement because it helps with production as a more senior management backing. Whereas indirect spend is complex, and made up of a mix of tangible and intangible services and is seen as less attractive. It is changing very quickly with some exciting challenges though. Indirect categories are difficult to manage because they have different customer preferences and regulations. Category in the indirect group are very diverse and do not fit neatly into specific criteria. But both direct and indirect procurement are essential to the business and can offer exciting opportunities to young professionals. And that marks the end of the podcast, folks. Next week, I want to talk about what is a consulting procurement maturity grade. So stay tuned. Till then, stay safe and happy sourcing. And if you have other questions about direct or indirect procurement, remember you can contact me directly on LinkedIn or by email because I'm always game for a chat. Bye and see you next week. Au revoir. You've been listening to Smart Consulting Sourcing, the only podcast about consulting procurement and how to buy consulting services, pro tips on how to use consulting, buy consulting, and manage it. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we hope you've gotten some useful and practical information. We'll be back soon, but in the meantime, hit the website at consultingquest.com. Check out the blog at consulting.wiki and find the ebook Smart Consulting Sourcing, a step by step guide to getting the best ROI from your consulting. Available on Amazon and other online sellers. Find us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. For questions and comments, send an email to ellen.lafitte at consultingquest.com. See you next time.